Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you the new Walt Disney feature, Pinocchio. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil P. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. This is a night that weaves a spell over the world. A time of reverence and rejoicing. Of family reunions and storytelling by the fire. On this enchanted night, we can all believe implicitly in stories like Pinocchio. Walt Disney transformed this old children's classic into a modern classic of the screen, giving new life to the little people. You met him at our microphone last year, when we presented Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. This year, his chair is empty, but he has sent us Pinocchio. Walt is busy getting Pinocchio ready for its national screen release through RKO in February. And besides, Mr. Disney's moving into a fine new studio at Burbank, the house that Donald Duck, Mickey Mouse, and Snow White built. Tonight, we introduce his latest characters for the first time in the house that Lux built. In two years of work on Pinocchio, 500 artists made about two million drawings of such likable people as Pinocchio himself, Jiminy Cricket, the Blue Fairy, and old Geppetto, the woodcarver. The Blue Fairy accomplishes some very wonderful things in Pinocchio, and she ought to feel right at home here, because Lux Flakes, too, has quite a reputation as a doer of good deeds. They're the kind of good deeds that make life easier in your household when Lux Flakes plays the good fairy to our feminine listeners. I feel we can make you see the beautiful color of the Disney picture as we bring you the story and spirit of Pinocchio. It's the spirit of all small boys who'd rather look for adventure than go to school. Now, just put yourself in the place of Geppetto, the woodcarver. Suppose you had made a puppet, a little wooden boy, and then all of a sudden, the puppet began to talk and move about like a real boy. (laughs) I believe you'd be ready for almost anything to happen, and that's the best frame of mind I can suggest for you now. As the Lux Radio Theater curtain goes up, on Act One of Walt Disney's Pinocchio. Christmas night. Dinner is over, and you're settled comfortably in your favorite chair beside the fireplace, gazing dreamily into the flames. You're relaxing for the first time today, and you've made a solemn resolution that nothing shall move you from this place for at least three hours. You won't be surprised if, at a time like this, that burnt ember on the hearth should move a little and sit up. For you've just noticed that it isn't an ember at all. It's a cricket. And not an ordinary cricket, either. He wears a beaver hat and a long green cutaway coat. And in his hand, he carries a furled umbrella. He sits looking at you out of his large, rather mournful eyes. And then, just as if it were the most natural thing in the world, he begins to sing. If your heart is in your dream, no request is too extreme. When you wish upon a star, your dream I'll bet a lot of you folks don't believe that About a wish coming true, do you? Well, I didn't either But of course I'm just a cricket singing my way from hearth to hearth But let me tell you what made me change my mind One night, a long time ago My travels took me to a quaint little village It was a beautiful night The stars were shining like diamonds, high above the roofs of that sleepy old town. Pretty as a picture. As I wandered along the crooked streets, there wasn't a soul to be seen. The only sign of life was a lighted window in the shop of a woodcarver named Geppetto. So I hopped over and looked in. Inside, there was a nice, cheerful fire burning. Kind of a shame to see it going to waste. So what do I do? I go in. 
Well, sir, you never saw such a place. The most fantastic clocks you ever laid your eyes on, and all carved out of wood. And cute little music boxes, each one a work of art, and shelf after shelf of toys. And then something else caught my eye. Sitting up on the work table was a puppet. You know, one of those marionette things, all strings and joints. Cute little fellow he was, too. All dressed up just like a real boy. But just then I heard a noise. It was the old woodcarver, Geppetto, and his cat, Figaro. I jumped behind the clock just as Mr. Geppetto came over and picked up the puppet. Well, now it won't take much longer. Just a little more paint and he's all finished. I think he'll be all right, don't you, Figaro? Meow. Sure, I paint a smile on his face, see? <laughs> that makes a big difference. <laughs> now, I have just the name for him. Pinocchio. Do you like it, Figaro? No. No? Well, we'll leave it to little Woodenhead. Do you like it, Woodenhead? That settles it. Pinocchio it is. Come on now, we'll try you out. Music professor! Well, sir, was I surprised. Every music box in the place began to play, and Geppetto made the puppet dance. Quite a sight, yes, sir. Go play your part. Bring it to joy to every heart. Hilly, do you know? And yes, it's true. That I might be proud of you. Little wooden feet and best of all. And little wooden feet in case you fall. <laughs> My little wooden head. Oh, you are a cute little fella. And that smile. Well, it must be getting late. I wonder what time it is. Ten o'clock sharp. Ten o'clock. Uh-oh. Come on, we'll go to bed. Good night, Pinocchio, little funny face. <laughs> Look at him, Figaro. He almost looks alive. Wouldn't that be nice if he... Was a real boy. Oh, well, come on now, we we'll go to sleep. Oh, Figaro, I forgot to open the window. Would you do it? Thank you, Figaro. Oh, Figaro, look up there in the sky, see? The wishing star. Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might have the wish I make tonight. Figaro, do you know what I wish? Yeah. I wish that my little Pinocchio might be a real boy. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Just think, a real boy. A very lovely thought, but not at all practical. And with that, the old woodcarver turned over and went to sleep. Well, it was a nice night for it, so I decided to do the same. But just as I got settled in a comfortable position, the room was suddenly filled with starlight. Yes, sir. Starlight. And it came right down in a long beam straight from that wishing star. And coming down along that beam, as I live and breathe, was a fairy. Yes, sir. A beautiful blue fairy. When you wish upon a star, shining brightly from the Geppetto, you have given so much happiness to others, you deserve to have your wish come true. Little puppet made of pine, wake. The gift of life is thine. What they can't do these days. Why, I can move. I can talk. And, and I can walk. Yes, Pinocchio. I've given you life. Why? Because tonight Geppetto wished for a real boy. Am I a real boy? No, Pinocchio. To make Geppetto's wish come true will be entirely up to you. Up to me? Prove yourself brave, truthful, and unselfish, and someday you will be a real boy. A real boy? That won't be easy. But you must learn to choose between right and wrong. Right and wrong? B but how will I know? How will he know? Your conscience will tell you. What a conscience? <laughs> Conch, what our conscience? I'll 
I'll tell you. A conscience is that still, small voice that people won't listen to. That's just the trouble with the world today. You see... Are uh, you my conscience? Who, me? Would you like to be Pinocchio's conscience? Well, I... I, uh... uh, uh, Very well. What is your name? Uh, Oh, oh, uh, uh, Cricket's the name. Jiminy Cricket. Neil, Mr. Cricket. Uh, Oh, well, uh... Be a little careful with that wand now. Uh, uh, Easy does it, my lady. I W Pinocchio's conscience. Lord High Keeper of the knowledge of right and wrong. Counselor in moments of temptation and guide along the straight and narrow path. Arise, Sir Jiminy Cricket. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, look at my clothes. All brand new. Say... That's pretty swell. But, uh, uh, don't you get a badge or something? We'll see. You mean, maybe I will? I shouldn't wonder. <laughs> Make it a gold one? Perhaps. Oh, but I must go now. Remember, Pinocchio, be a good boy. And always let your conscience be your guide. Goodbye. Goodbye, my lady. Goodbye. Well, <laughs> Pinocchio... <clears throat> Uh, maybe you and I had better have a little heart-to-heart talk. Why? Well, you want to be a real boy, don't you? Uh Uh-huh. All right, sit down, son. Now, you see, the world is full of temptations. Temptations? Yes, temptations. Uh, you see, there are the wrong things that seem right at the time. But, uh, uh, even though the right things may seem wrong, uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes the wrong things, uh, may be right at the, uh, wrong time, or, or, uh, vice versa. <clears throat> Understand? Uh-huh, but I'm going to do right. Atta boy, Pinocchio, and I'm going to help you. And any time you need me, you know, just whistle, like this. Like this? No, no. Try it again, Pinocchio. Like this? No, son. Now listen. That's it! When you get in trouble and you don't know right from wrong, give a little whistle. Give a little whistle. When you meet temptation and the urge is very strong, give a little whistle. Give a little whistle. Not just a little squeak. Pucker up and blow. And if your whistle's weak, yell, Jimmy Cricket! Right! Take the straight and narrow path, and if you start to slide, give a little whistle. Give a little whistle. And always let your conscience be your guide. <laughs> and always let your conscience be your guide. Look out, Pinot. Don't dance on the table. You'll fall off. you Oh, I knew it. I knew it. Oh, sir. It's me. There's somebody in here. Whoever you are, where are you? Here I am. Oh. Pinocchio, how did you get down on the floor? I fell down. Oh, you did? You... Oh, you're talking. Uh-huh. No, 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 no. Yes, and I can move, too. No, 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 no. You, you can't. I, I, I'm dreaming in my sleep. Uh, where's water? Uh, a pail of water. That will wake me up. <sighs> now we see who is dreaming. Go on. Say something. <laughs> Gee, your buddy, do it again. You do talk. Yes, the blue fairy king. The blue fairy. Uh huh. And, and I got a conscience. A conscience. And someday I'm going to be a real boy. A real boy. It's my wish. It's come true. Figaro, look, he's alive. He can talk. Say hello to Figaro. Hello to Figaro. Figaro. See, didn't I tell you? Isn't he smart? Oh, my little wooden head. My little Pinocchio. We'll make you very, very happy here for you. Oh, what you always wanted in life. Come on now, it's late. You, you, you must close your eye and go to sleep. Why? Oh, everybody has to sleep. Figaro goes to sleep and, and I go to sleep and decides tomorrow I've got to go to school. Why? Oh, to learn things and get smart. Why? Oh, because. Oh. Good night, my little Pinocchio. Good night. And maybe, maybe someday you'll call me father, huh? Sure. Good night, father. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Good night, son. Oh, look, Father, look! 
Now wait. Stand still now while I put on your coat. What are those out on the street? Huh? Oh, those. They are your schoolmates, girls and boys. Real boys? Of course they're going to school. Now, here's an apple for the teacher, and you are ready to go. Now run along. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye, son. There we went, off to school. And where was I while this was going on? Folks, I'm ashamed to tell you. I was asleep. A fine conscience I turned out to be. I should have been right with you. You see, I'd heard about a couple of bad characters around that town. One fellow by the name of Honest John. And say, was he a bad one? He was as sharp as a fox. Yes, sir. Looked like a fox, too. Uh, kind of a long face like a fox. And say, come to think of it, I guess he was a fox. And, well, you see, this honest John had a stooge by the name of Gideon, a dumb alley cat. And between the two of them, they were a pretty tricky pair. Well, when I thought about them that morning, I tell you, I just shivered all over. Imagine the innocent little Pinocchio on his way to school with honest John and Gideon roaming the street. Oh, Gideon, my boy, listen. The merry laughter of little children wending their way to school. <laughs> Thirsty little minds rushing to the fountain of knowledge. <laughs> ah, school, a noble institution. What would this stupid world be without school? <laughs> well, 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 Giddy, look at that billboard. Stromboli and his marionettes. Hm. So that old rascal's back in town, eh? <laughs> Remember, Giddy, the time I tied strings on you and passed you off as a puppet? Oh, <laughs> we nearly put one over on the old gypsy that time, eh? <laughs> good morning. Ah, good morning, good morning. Well, look at that, Gideon. A little wooden boy. Ho, ho. Now, who ever heard of a wooden boy? A live puppet without strings. <laughs> Gideon, look. It's amazing. A live puppet without strings. Why, a thing like that ought to be worth a fortune to someone. But who? Now let me see. I know. Scramboli. Why, that fat old faker would give his eye to... Listen, Giddy. If we play our cards right, we'll be on easy street. Or my name isn't Honest John. Quick, after that boy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> stupid. Put that mallet away. Don't be crude. Let me handle this. Ah, oh, my little toddler. Well, permit me to introduce myself. J. Worthington Fowl Fellow. A fine day, isn't it? Yes, sir. Well, well, well. Quite a scholar, I see. Look at his books, Kitty. A man of letters. I'm going to school. School? Oh, yes. Oh, then you, uh, you haven't heard of the easy road to success? Uh-uh. No? Huh. I am speaking, my boy, of the theater. Bright lights. Music, applause, fame. Fame? Yes, and with that personality, that profile, that physique, why, he's a natural-born actor, eh, Giddy? <laughs> but I'm going... Straight to the top. Why, I can see your name in lights. Lights six feet high. What is your name? Pinocchio. Pinocchio. P-I-N-U, P-I-N-O-U-O. <laughs> but we're wasting precious time. Come. On to the theater. Fine silly thing. A night is right for me. A high silk hat and a silver cane. A watch of gold with a diamond chain. I did a day. A night is life is gay. It's great to be a celebrity. A night is life for me. I did a day. That's when I finally caught up to him. The three of them, arm in arm, walking down the street. Just as they were passing by, I grabbed hold of Pinocchio and pulled him behind a tree. Psst. Pinocchio. It's me, Jiminy Cricket. Oh, hello, Jiminy. Where did he go? Uh, quiet, Pinocchio. Quiet. Pinocchio. Ooh. Don't answer him, Pinocchio. Pinocchio. Now listen. But, Jiminy, I'm going to be an actor. All right, oh. son. Take it easy now. Ooh. Remember what I said about temptation? Uh-huh. Well, Ooh. that's him. That feller there. Oh. oh, no, Jimmy. That's Mr. Honest John. Honest John? All right, then. Here's what we'll tell him. You can't go to the theater. Say thank you just the same. You're sorry, but you've got to go to school. Uh-huh. All right. Atta boy. Here they come, Pinocchio. Now you tell them. Little boy. Pinocchio. Oh. Well, well, there you are. Well, now let me see. Where were we? Ah, yes. On to the theater. Okay. Goodbye, Jiminy. Goodbye. Goodbye? Huh? Goodbye? Hey, wait a minute. Pinocchio, hey, come back. Wait a minute. Hi, Jiminy. Pinocchio's 
night for me. A wax mustache and a fever coat, a pony cart and a billy goat. I need to leave them. them. A night to night is fun. You wear your hair in a pompadour. You ride around in a coach and four. You stop and buy out a candy store. And night for life for me. <laughs> In just a moment, Mr. DeMille brings you Act Two of Pinocchio. In a charming home out in Westwood Park this morning, a very pretty scene took place. The sun was pouring through the long, broad windows of a pleasant living room, lighting up the Christmas tree in its welter of packages. The family was gathered round, John and Peg, and their two small children eagerly opening presents. Oh, oh, Mommy, oh, 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 I gotta shoot you. I gotta shoot you. Oh, Mommy, my nose is the same mom. Children, children, not quite so much noise. Any more presents? Any more presents? Yes, just one more, and it's for Mother. Here you are, Peg. Thank you, John. Oh, Mommy, I wouldn't have What is it? Look at the box. I bet it's a ring. It is. Oh, John, you angel. A beautiful pearl ring. Read the card, Mommy. For the lovely hand of the loveliest woman I know. John, darling, I think I'm going to kiss you. <laughs> but you really shouldn't have done it, dear. Well, well, then you shouldn't have such beautiful hands, sweetheart. They asked for jewels. <laughs> and me, a staid old married woman. Oh, oh just a darling little homebody. <laughs> Who washes dishes every day. Now, that, Sally, was a homey loving scene that might happen anywhere. You know, Mr. Ruick. I don't believe there's anything that touches a woman quite so much as knowing her husband adores her. His love is so precious. And made up of so many little things, Sally. Yes, her hands, for instance. In a way, the appearance of a woman's hands doesn't seem important. But oh, how very important it really is. One of the big little things that makes for happiness. And that's why Lux Flakes are so important an item in the household. For Lux helps a woman do dishwashing and other soap and water tasks and yet helps keep her hands looking dainty and feminine. You know, so few of us can afford maids, but that's no reason why we should look like drudges. And Lux Flakes enable us to do our own work, wash our own dishes, and yet help our hands stay attractive. And now, Mr. Ruick, I'd like to say to our audience that I hope they've all had and are having a very happy Christmas. A wish, Sally, in which I join you. Now our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act Two of Pinocchio. As we dream beside the fire, where the flames cast dancing patterns on the hearth, we wait politely for our friend the cricket to continue his story. He's paused to allow a large round tear to roll down his cricket face. But now he rouses himself, and pulling a red silk bandana from his coattail pocket... He blows his cricket nose. Well, it was my fault. I should have known better. Maybe if I'd been with Pinocchio when he first met those two sharpies, I could have stopped it. But there he was, an actor in Stromboli's marionette show. I went to the show that night to see him. I hid in a tree near the wagon they used as a stage. And near the end of the performance, Stromboli came out. Ladies and gentlemen, to conclude the performance of this great show, Stromboli, the master showman, that's me, and by special permission of the management, that's me too, is presented to you something... You will absolutely refuse to believe. Introducing the only marionette who can sing and dance absolutely without the aid of strings. I hope so, Quando Rebicolo Gagarde. The only and one Pinocchio. Hmm. What a build up. Go ahead, Pinocchio. Make a fool of yourself. Then maybe you listen to your conscience. To make me fret, or make me frown I hit strings, but now I'm free There are no strings on me hi ho the Mario That's the only way to be I want the world 
in the rain when Stromboli's wagon passed by, and I felt pretty blue. I thought, well, there he goes, sitting in the lap of luxury, the world at his feet. Oh, well, I can always say I knew him when. I'll just go out of his life quietly. I would like to wish him luck, though. Sure. Why not? I'll catch the wagon and slip under the door. Pinocchio. Pinocchio. It's me. Your old friend, Jiminy, remember? Jiminy! <laughs> oh, gee, am I glad to see you. Hey, what are you doing in that cave? What did he do to you? Oh, he was mad. He said he'd push my face in everybody's eye. Yeah? And and just because I'm, I'm a gold brick, he's going to cut me in the firewood. Oh, is that so? Oh, listen, he stopped the wagon. Now, don't you worry, son. I'll have you out of here in no time at all. But how can you? There's... There's a great big lock on the cage. Oh, what's a lock to a guy like me? Didn't you ever hear of picking them open? Jiminy Valentine, my friends call me. Of course, I, I've never tried to make a living at it. I... <clears throat> uh, it's kind of rusty. You mean you can't open it? I'm, I'm afraid not. Looks pretty hopeless. It'll take a miracle to get you out of that cage. Hey, look up there, Pinocchio. That star. See? It's the wishing star. And here comes the lady, the blue fairy. Oh, what will she say? What will I tell her? Well, you might tell her the truth. Quiet. Why, Pinocchio. <laughs> Hello. And Sir Jimmy. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. <laughs> Pinocchio, why didn't you go to school? School? Well, I well, go was... ahead. Go ahead and tell her. I was going to school to, till I met somebody. Met somebody? Uh, yeah, uh, two big monsters with, with big green eyes. Oh, no. Hey, Pinocchio, what's happening to your nose? Monsters? Weren't you afraid, Pinocchio? No, ma'am. They tied me in a, in a big sack. Oh, no. Pinocchio, your nose is growing. So they tied you in a big sack. And where was Sir Jiminy? Jiminy, uh, they, they put him in a little sack. Oh, Pinocchio. 
I tell you, your nose is branching out like a tree. And how... What did you escape? I didn't. They chopped me up into firewood. Oh, oh, look, my nose. What's happened? Looks like a plum tree to me. Perhaps you haven't been telling the truth, Pinocchio. Perhaps. Oh, but I have every single word. Oh, oh, please, please help me. I'm, I'm awfully sorry. You see, Pinocchio, a lie keeps growing and growing until it's as plain as the nose on your face. She's right, Pinocchio. You better come clean. I'll never lie again. Honest, I won't. Please, Your Honor. I mean, uh, Miss Fairy, give him another chance. For my sake. Will you, huh? I'll forgive you this once. But remember, Pinocchio, a boy who won't be good might just as well be made of wood. I'll be good. I, I promise. Very well. But this is the last time I can help you. again, and, and you're free. Come on. I'm free. I'm free. Hooray! Yes, sir. There we were, free as the air and on our way back to Mr. Geppetto's. But little did we know, little did we know that even then, no, the new deviltry was hatching. Down in a waterfront dive known as the Red Lobster Inn, Honest John and his crony Gideon sat drinking beer. With them was a companion, an evil-faced, leering coachman. Hi, diddle dee an actor's life for me. It's great to be a celebrity, an actor's life for me. <laughs> and the dummy fell for it, eh, Gideon? <laughs> he still thinks we're his friends. <laughs> and did Stromboli pay? <laughs> Plenty. That shows you how low honest John will stoop. <laughs> now, coachman, what's your proposition? Well... How would you blokes like to make some real money? Like this, maybe. <whistles> and whose throat do we have to... Uh... <coughs> no, 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 nothing like that. You see, I'm collecting stupid little boys. Stupid little boys? Yes, you know, the disobedient ones. What play you give them school? Ooh. And you see, hey, listen. And I take them to Pleasure Island. Oh, <laughs> to Pleasure Island. Pleasure Island? But the law is no, no, there's no risk. They never come back as boys. <laughs> now, here's where you come in. Well, yes, sir. I've got a coach load leaving at midnight. Yes. We'll meet at the crossroads. Yes, sir. And no double crossing. Oh, no, no, no. Scout around. And any good prospects you find, bring them to me. Yes. I knows what to do with him. <laughs> Hurry up, Pinocchio. We want to get home, don't we? Sure, and you know what, Jiminy? I'm turning over a new leaf. I'll make good this time. Well, you'd better. I will. I'm going to school. That's the stuff, Pinocchio. Come on, I'll race you home. All right. Ready. On your mark, set, Go! Come on, Pinocchio. I'm well ahead of you. Uh, I'm going. I'm going. Oh. oh, I fell. Oh. <laughs> Hello, little boy. I'm afraid that you've tripped over my cane. Oh, please, Mr. Ennis John, let me go. i got to be Jiminy home. Just a minute, my little man. And how is the great actor today? I don't want to be an actor. Strong boy was terrible. He was? But yeah, he locked me in a, in a cage. He did? Uh-huh, but I learned my lesson. I'm oh, going... Oh, my poor, poor boy, you must be a nervous wreck. Oh, well, we must diagnose this case. Come, Dr. Gideon, quick, your notebook. <laughs> now let me feel your pulse, little man. Oh, bless my soul. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Just as I thought. Bucolic semilunar contraptions of the flying trapezes. Mm-mm-mm. Now... Hold your tongue. Hold your tongue and say hippopotamus. Hippopotamus. Uh huh. Trans uh, compound transmission of the pandemonium. Even worse. Close your eyes. Now what do you see? Nothing. Aha! Uh -huh. I was afraid of that. Now that heart. Oh, oh! My goodness! A palpitating syncopation of the killer villa. 
Quick, Doctor, quick, that report. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now that makes it perfectly clear. Oh, my boy, my poor little boy. You, you are allergic. Allergic? Yes, and there's only one cure. A vacation on Pleasure Island. Pleasure Island? Pleasure Island, that happy land of carefree little boys where every day is a holiday. But I can't go. I... Why, of course you can go. Look, I'm giving you my ticket. Here you are, the Ace of Spades. Guy Spades? Oh, tut, 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 I insist your health comes first. Come, the coach departs at midnight. Come along now. Why, it is, Dee Dee. It's Pleasure Isle for me. Well, every day is a holiday, and kids have nothing to do but play. Hi, Diddly Dee. Ah, it's Pleasure Isle for me. Splendid, splendid. Ah. Pinocchio! Uh, Pinocchio! Now, where do you suppose he is? Pinocchio! Oh, there he is. He's with that fox again, and they're getting into a coach. It's a coach all filled with boys. Oh, well, here we go again. Gita! Gita! Hello, kid. My name's Lampwick. What's yours? Pinocchio. Ever been to Pleasure Island? Uh-uh. But Mr. Honest John gave me... Me neither. They say it's a swell joint. No school, no cops. You can tear to join a party and nobody says a word. Honest John gave Loaf me... Loaf around, plenty to eat, plenty to drink. Yeah, and it's all free. Honest John... Boy, that's the place. I can hardly wait. Ho, ho, ho. There it is, boys. Just ahead of the fleet. Pleasure Island. What a place. Ferris wheels, merry-go-rounds, hot dog stands, shoots the shoots, everything, and all lit up like a million stars. And all for nothing, huh? Sounds fishy to me. Oh, hurry, 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 hurry. Right here, boys, right here. Get your cake, pie, dill, pickles, and ice cream. Eat all you can. Be a glutton. Stuff yourself. It's all free, boys. It's all free. Hurry, hurry. have been turned off. And where is everybody? I don't like the looks of this. Looks like a graveyard. Pinocchio! Hey! Where are you? Pinocchio! Okay, Pinocchio. Are we shooting full or ain't we? It's your shot. Oh, sure. Nice try, kid. Have another cigar. It's on the house. Another one? Okay. Atta boy. Now watch this shot. The eight ball in the side pocket. Hey, Lampy. Where do you suppose all the kids went to? Ah, oh, they're around here somewhere. What do you care? You're having a good time, ain't you? Uh-huh, I sure am. Ah, oh, boy, this is the life, huh, Pinocchio? <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Ah, uh, you smoke like me grandmother. Come on, take a big drag like this. Okay, Lappy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, kid? Losing your grip? Pinocchio! Oh, hello, Jiminy. Oh, so this is where I find you. How do you ever expect to be a real boy? Oh, look at yourself. Smoking, playing pool. You're coming right home with me this minute. Hey, who's the beetle? Oh. Come here, you. Let me go. Put me down. Don't hurt him. He's my conscience. He tells me what's right and wrong. What? Do you mean to tell me you take orders from a grasshopper? Grasshopper? Look here, you impudent pup. It wouldn't hurt you to take orders from your grasshopper, uh, uh, your conscience, if you have one. Yeah, 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 sure. The screwball in the corner pocket. That's you, beetle. <laughs> Why, you young hoodlum, I'll knock your block off. Or I'll tear you apart and put you back together again. I oh, tell don't you... hurt him, Jiminy. He's my best friend. Huh? Your best friend? And what am I? Just your conscience. Okay, that settles it. Goodbye. But, but Jiminy... You buttered your bread, now sleep in it. But Jiminy, Lampwick says a guy only lives one. Lampwick? Huh. I've heard enough about him. Goodbye. Come on, come on, let him go. You're shot, Pinocchio. 
Goodbye, Jiminy. Lampwick. <laughs> Lampwick. Well, that burns me up. After all I've tried to do for him. I've had enough of this. I'm taking the next boat out of here. Hey, hey, what goes on here? Where did all those donkeys come from? Come on, you blokes, keep it moving. Load those jack horses on the ship. We haven't got all night. Hey, coachman, where did all those donkeys come from? Come on, come on, let's have another jack horse there. One coming up. Hello, jack horse. And what's your name? <laughs> okay, you'll do. In you go. You lads, I'll bring a nice price. <laughs> All right, next. One coming up. And what might your name be? Alexander. Mm, so you can talk, eh? Yes, yes, sir. I want to go home to my mama. Take him back. He can still talk. Please, please. I don't want to be a donkey. Let me out of here. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. You boys have made jackasses out of yourselves. Now fight for it. Boys, so that's what they brought them here for. They're changing them into donkeys. Oh, Pinocchio! Pinocchio! <laughs> to hear that beetle talk, you'd think something was going to happen to us. Conscience. Ah, fooey. Where does he get that stuff? How do you expect to be a real boy? But you think I look like a jackass? You sure do look, Lampwick. You're growing long ears and, and a tail. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey, you laugh like a donkey. <laughs> hey, did that come out of me? I think so. Hey, what the... Hey, what's going on here? I got hoofs and a long snoot. Oh, I'm the double cross. I'm turning into a donkey. Help, help. The kids, the boys, they're all turning into donkeys. Uh, Pinocchio, where did you get those ears? What ears? Those ears. Oh, and you've got a tail. Me? Me? Oh, quick. <laughs> We've got to get out of here before you get any worse. Come on. Oh, oh, no. oh, 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 During our short intermission before Mr. DeMille brings you Act Three of Pinocchio, we turn the microphone over to Miss Libby Collins, our exclusive Hollywood reporter. What have you found for us this week, Libby? Well, as a matter of fact, I found there's quite a lot of truth in the saying, the Colonel's Lady and Judy O'Grady are sisters under the skin. Mm, that needs explaining, Libby. Well, you know, women are knitting from Maine to California these days. And believe it or not, the Hollywood actresses are just as enthusiastic about it as women anywhere else. I've seen Joan Crawford knitting between scenes on the set of Strange Cargo. It's one of Myrna Loy's favorite occupations. And whenever Rosalind Russell has a free moment on her hands, out comes the knitting bag. Movie stars and extras, script girls and secretaries, they're all doing it. I think Sally here has caught the fever, too. I saw her knitting away at something just the other day. What's it going to be, Sally? Why, it's a sweater, Mr. Ruick, a white one. It looked pretty nice to me. But uh, it's going to take a lot of washing to keep it white, isn't it? <laughs> oh, that doesn't worry me a bit, Mr. Ruick. It'll be easy to do with Lux Flakes. The same kind of care leading motion picture studios give their washables. Talk about sisters under the skin. Motion picture studios use Lux Flakes. So do women everywhere. Whether they knit sweaters or buy them. Or get them for Christmas presents. Those sweaters deserve nice care. Don't use hot water on them. Don't rub them with cake soap. And don't use soaps with harmful alkali. Just squeeze your sweaters gently through lukewarm Lux Suds. That's good sound advice. And it goes for the other nice woolens people get for Christmas, like socks and mittens and scarves. If they're safe in water alone, there's no harmful alkali in gentle Lux Flakes to hurt any color or fabric that's safe in plain water. When you use Lux, you'll find it's so pure, a little goes a long way. Lux is thrifty. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Continue with 
with Pinocchio. The flames mount higher on the fireplace, and Jiminy Cricket's excitement rises with the blaze. He climbs to the top of the brass andiron, and there, waving his umbrella about his head, he continues this strange tale. What a situation. Trapped on Pleasure Island, and Pinocchio's ear is growing longer by the second. I grabbed him by the hand. Through the streets we ran. Down toward the boat. Then they saw us. They came after us, shouting and shooting and shooting and shouting. We ran up an alley. We jumped over a fence. I could hear them pounding along behind us. They were coming nearer and nearer. And then at last we reached the shore. Jump, I yelled. And we jumped into the water, swimming like mad. And we escaped. I'm on ill. Whew. Really, all we in. Well... But we got home, and I hid Pinocchio's long ears under his hat, and we walked up the path toward the house. Gosh, certainly feels good to be back on dry land. (laughs) Yes, it certainly does. Well, here's the house. The door's locked. Father! Father, I'm home! We're home, Mr. Geppetto. Father, it's me, Pinocchio! I'm home to stay! Wait a second. I'll jump up and look in the window. Hmm. What do you see, Jiminy? Well, he ain't there. <laughs> He's gone? Yeah. And Figaro, too. Oh, gosh, maybe something awful's happened to him. Well, don't worry, son. He probably hasn't gone far. Say, look. Look at that star. It's the same one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that bird flying around up there. Why, he's got a piece of paper in his beak. He's drawn it. Get it, Jiminy. I got it. What is it, Jiminy? Why, it's a message. Well, what's it say? It's about your father. Oh, where is he? Why, uh, 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 it says here uh, that he went looking for you and, and he was swallowed by a whale. Swallowed uh, by a whale? Yeah, uh-huh, a whale. He, a whale? Oh, my goodness. A whale named Geppetto. Oh, he's... Oh, he's... No, Pinocchio, he's alive. He is. Uh, oh, Lord, where? Well, oh. he, he's inside of a whale at, at the bottom of the sea. Bottom of the sea? Uh-huh. Hey, where are you going? I'm going to find him. Oh, but Pinocchio, are you crazy? Don't you realize he's in a whale? i got to go to him. Oh, now wait. Listen, son. Uh, this monstro, I've heard of him. He, why, why, he's a whale of a whale. He, he swallows whole ships alive. I don't care. Hey, what's that rock for? I'm going to jump off this cliff with it. Then I'll sink fast. Oh, my goodness. Goodbye, Jiminy. Goodbye. Oh, no. I may be live bait down there, but I'm with you. Come on. Let's go. Look out. Ah, my son! Ah, my son! Ah, 
I'm so happy to see you. Oh, uh, me too, Father. How did you get here? Where's your friend Jiminy? He's outside, I guess. I got caught in that school of fishing. Well, here I am. Oh, my boy, my boy. You came to save me. <laughs> oh, 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 you're soaking wet. Now, shut Yes, up. Father. You, you, you mustn't catch cold. You know you, you, you shouldn't have come down here. Here, here, here. Take this blanket. Let me take your head. Oh, Pinocchio! Well, what? What's the matter? Those ears! <laughs> ears? Oh, these. <laughs> That's nothing. Look, I got a tail, too. <laughs> Pinocchio, what's happened to you? Well, I... Oh, never mind now. Old Chipetta has his little wooden head. Nothing else matters. Well, what we got? Get out of here. Get out. Oh, no, no, no. Son, I've tried every way. Why, I, 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 I even built a raft. A raft, that's it. Huh? We'll take the raft, and when the whale opens his mouth. No, 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 no. Now listen, son. He only opens his mouth when he's eating. Then everything comes in. Nothing goes out. Oh. It's hopeless, Pinocchio. Come. We make a nice fire and we cook some of the fish. A fire, that's it. Yes, and then we'll all eat again. A great big fire, lots of smoke. Smoke? Oh yes, sure. Smoked fish will taste good. Wait, so what? <laughs> Pinocchio, not the chair. Really, Father, more wood. But what we'll sit on if we it... We won't need it. We're getting out. Getting out, but how? We'll make lots of smoke. We'll make him sneeze. Make him sneeze. Oh, that will make him mad. Come on, I'll light the fire. Now get on the raft, Father. <coughs> I won't work. Hurry, Father, try on. We we'll never get by those teeth. Oh, yes, we will. the whole thing. I was right outside when that whale sneezed, and that raft shot out like a cannonball. But that didn't end it. No, sir. If you sneeze once, you gotta sneeze again, and that's what he did. He started to inhale. What occurred? The raft went flying back into his mouth, but it didn't stay there, because the next thing you know, that second sneeze came. I could feel it coming. The whale was all red in the face. He puffed away up, and then he let go. Out came the raft again, and this time the monster was sore. He started chasing him, fire in his eyes, his teeth crashing and his tail swinging. Pinocchio and Mr. Geppetto paddled like fury. Oh, the shore was only a few yards away, but the whale was gaining. Inch by inch, foot by foot, closer and closer. His breath was hot on the earth, uh, hot on the earth. Uh, he was very close, and just ahead was a big cliff. The raft swung in between two rocks, the whale right behind him. He went straight for the cliff, head on, and he hit the cliff. Where was Pinocchio and, and Mr. Geppetto and, and Figaro? They were washed up on the beach. And when I got there, old Mr. Geppetto was kneeling beside the little wooden boy. Pinocchio was... He was dead. My boy. My brave little boy. Oh, oh gosh. Don't cry, Mr. Geppetto. He, he was brave and we got to be brave, too. My little wooden boy, he gave his life that I might live. <laughs> Prove yourself brave, truthful, and unselfish, and someday you will be a real boy. <laughs> Awake, Pinocchio. Awake. Father, what you crying for? Because... You're dead, Pinocchio. No, no, I'm not. Yes, yes, you are. Now, now lie down. But, Father, I'm alive, see? And, and I'm, I'm real. Oh, I'm a real boy. Uh, you're alive. And you are a real boy. <laughs> a real boy. <laughs> oh, Pinocchio, my dream is really true at last. Oh, gosh. Thank you, Miss Blue Fairy. He deserved to be a real boy and wealth. And here's your reward, too. A badge for Sir Jiminy. Oh, and you didn't forget. Well, will you look at that? A badge. Official conscience. 
Well, I'll be. <laughs> oh, and it's solid gold, too. Gosh. Thank you, my lady. Like a bow, out of the blue, suddenly it comes in view. just a moment, Mr. DeMille will tell you about the play, which is going to start the new year. But first, Sally, I'd like to know whether Santa Claus treated you well today. Nobly, Mr. Ruick, nobly. <laughs> I got some lovely presents. I'm willing to wager almost anything that some of your presents were lingerie and stockings. As a matter of fact, they were, Mr. Ruick. But how did you know? Well, it's really not fair, Sally. I read somewhere the other day that lingerie and stockings are the most popular Christmas gifts for women. Well, they're popular with me, all right. Know what, Mr. Ruick? No, what? Every single one of those precious bits of lace and silk I got, and all my nice stockings, too, are going to be brought up on Lux Flakes. Not one single one of them is going to be washed with harsh soap or rubbed with cake soap. Not ever. So there. <laughs> well, you needn't laugh. I love my pretty new presents, and I want them to stay nice-looking a long, long time. Well, Sally, you picked the right kind of care for them, then. Lux helps fabrics and colors stay new-looking longer. There's no harmful alkali and no rubbing to hurt anything safe in water alone. <laughs> Don't I know it. That's why I'm so set on never using anything but Lux Flakes. That's good advice, Sally. Mighty good advice. And I hope every woman in our audience will follow it. Now, Mr. DeMille. Here in the Lux Radio Theater... We have regarded it as quite an honor to present Walt Disney's Pinocchio for the first time. And we wish Mr. Disney a highly merited success with his new picture, when his new picture is brought to the screen in a few weeks. Next Monday night, we bring a fine actor back to this microphone, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Our play is Sorrel and Son, adapted from the popular novel by Warwick Deeping. It's a profoundly moving drama of the sacrifice a father made for his son. Karen Morley will also appear with Herbert Marshall in Sorrel and Son. In your living rooms tonight are some who are there only on Christmas. And I know their presence has made it a happier day for you. Still others may have joined your family circle through the medium of the Lux Radio Theater because they knew that you at home were listening. So to those of our radio family who are at home, and to those who are far from home, we send our greetings and our hope that you've enjoyed all the blessings of this Christmas day. And our hope, too, that your prayers will join ours for the restoration of that blessing of 1,900 years ago. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Herbert Marshall in Sorrel and Son with Karen Morley. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Picture Pinocchio were written by Lee Harleen with lyrics by Ned Watson. Our music was directed by Louis Chilton, and your announcer has been Melville Roy. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.